Hello students, how are you? I hope you all are fine. Uh, in previous class we have discussed about the prokaryotic cell. Okay. Now today we are going to discuss about the characteristic feature of the prokaryotic cell again. So here uh, we have defined the prokaryotic cell that is the cell which is capable of or uh, the cell in which the most of the cellular organelles are absent or they are not well developed and the endomembrane system is absent. So such type of cell is referred as a prokaryotic cell. Okay, all the cells are uh, the cell organelles are not membrane bound in such a cell. So that is what prokaryotic cell. Now here we are going to discuss about the some of the characteristic features. In previous class we have discussed about the uh, capsule and the cell wall, right? Now here again we are going to discuss about the cell wall composition. So the cell wall composition, okay, that is another part, is the cell wall. Okay, so we have discussed about cell wall composition. The cell wall it is composed of, okay, it is composed of the peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan. So peptidoglycan is what? See here, peptidoglycan is a, it is a kind of compound, okay, uh, which is a complex kind of compound. You can say peptidoglycan that refers to the protein and glycan is a kind of sugar. So here. It is complex, which is also referred as the murine or murine. Now, I have discussed about it that peptidoglycan it is composed of two different cross polymers that is the N acetyl glucosamide and N acetyl uramic acid that is NAG and NAM that is N acetyl glucosamide and N acetyl uramic acid. Now what exactly we are going to discuss is about what is N-acetyl uremic acid and what is N-acetyl glucosamide do, does in the peptidoglycan. Okay, so they are supposed to provide the gram's nature. Okay, a scientist was there who has discovered the nature of the bacteria. So bacteria can be described as gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative bacteria. Okay, so what is gram-positive bacteria and what is gram-negative bacteria? It is based on a method called gram staining. So see, in the students, it is very important to understand the nature. See, when scientists have discovered the bacteria, and uh, after discovering bacteria, means uh, how they recognize this bacteria, okay, and how they name this bacteria is very much important point. Again, you will study better these points in the diversity in the living organisms. In that chapter also, we will discuss about it through the kingdom monera. But here. What I am trying to say is that peptidoglycan helps to determine the nature of the bacteria. Okay, so bacteria basically they are of two types. In case of the uh, in terms of the gram's nature and in terms of the nature. So here, due to the presence of peptidoglycan, the bacteria can be divided into two main types. That is gram positive and gram. Negative. Okay, so gram positive means care and what is the gram negative? So here, if the cell wall of the bacteria it is having around ninety percent of peptidoglycan, then it is called as gram positive bacteria. If the peptidoglycan is less than is less than the ninety percent. In the cell wall, it is referred as gram negative. Now, how it is supposed to be explained? It can be explained with a method called gram staining. So, that scientists have discovered a method to identify the structure and nature of the bacteria via a method called gram staining. Now, staining is a method which will help us to understand the structure. Now, how? By means of certain colors. Okay. हम आप लोगों को पता होगा dye करना dye means putting color to the particular object okay here also we are putting certain stain stain means it is a color for observation of the bacteria okay so the method is called as the gram staining okay there are different types of methods are there for staining so it is under the differential staining method so differential staining method is here we are using two different types of stains for neutralization of the bacterial cells. Okay, so let's take an example or let's talk about the gram staining. Gram staining. Okay, so see 
Graph staining is a method by which we can identify the nature of bacteria. For graph staining, what we have to do is we have to culture the bacteria. Okay, we can culture the bacteria from any of the atmospheric uh, conditions. Like we can collect the bacteria from the soil. We can also collect the bacteria from the water. We can collect the water bacteria from the air also. Right? There are certain methods by which we can collect these bacteria. And after collection, what we can do is we can culture them on the petri plates or the petri dishes. Okay, it is a method which has been done in the laboratory, in the microbiology laboratory. What we do is we collect the different uh, means we collect the bacteria from different sources and culture them into a artificial culture medium. Okay, and after that, what we have to take is we have to take a single colony. See, petri plates are the plates. These are the kind of glasses. Okay. And here we can culture the number of bacteria, different bacteria can be cultured. Now what we have to do is we have to pick a single colony. But all this dotted structure can be referred as a colony. A single colony we have to pick and we have to take onto the petri or we have to take onto the glass line. Okay, we have to take onto the glass line. And what we have to do is we have to make the smear. Smear is nothing but spreading. It is the spreading of the Bacterial growth quality. Okay, so there are certain steps which can be followed to understand graph staining. Let's talk about the steps of the graph staining. Okay, so just look after the steps what I am telling you and we will try to understand what is graph staining and how we can understand the graph's nature of the bacteria. Now, the first step is a state a loop. Full suspension of bacterial colony. Bacterial colony. Okay, then second step is prepare the smear. Now, smear is a smear with what? Like smear is nothing but a method by which we can uh, spread the bacterial, uh, what we say, spread the bacterial uh, colony. Okay. So, you have to take an example, this is a slide. This is a slide. Okay. And onto the slide, we are taking the bacterial colony and we are spreading it. Okay. Okay. After spreading, what we have to do? We have to take Okay. So, this is the bacterial colony. We will start once again the closure and so steps of the ground cell. So, first method, first step is take, take the bacterial colony or take the suspension. Slide to the slide, what we are doing? 
ना प्रिपेयरिंग का स्मीयर तो स्मीयर बारे में आपने स्प्रेड कर दिया स्मीयर में स्प्रेड कर दिया एंड आफ्टर स्प्रेडिंग इट व्हाट वी हैव टू डू इज वी हैव टू अलाउ इट टू एयर ड्राई ओके एयर ड्राई मींस वी हैव टू गो गेट ओपन इन द एयर सो इट विल गेट ड्राई आफ्टर एयर ड्राई यू हैव टू हीट फिक्स हीट फिक्स हीट फिक्स मींस व्हाट सपोज दिस इज अ स्लाइड एंड यू आर सपोज टू होल्ड ऑन टू द बर्नर ओके सो दिस इज द बर्नर ओवर हियर and from the burner the flame is coming out okay on this flame just we have to keep for 30 seconds so that it will get heat fix heat fix ka matlab hota hai whatever proteins are present around the bacterial cell will coagulate and settle onto the bacteria on this line so that there will be uh, heat fixing and coagulation of the protein which is present in the cell or the cell wall of the bacteria so it will get fixed on it after heat fixing okay what we have to do is we have to apply the one or two drops of crystal violet type of steam okay then the next step is apply two to or one to two drops one to two drops of crystal violet crystal
Like if they appear violet in color or purple in color, that means they are gram positive. That means they are having more amount of peptidoglycan because if the peptidoglycan content in the cell wall is more, then it will absorb the crystal wall state. And if the peptidoglycan content in the cell wall is less, then it will absorb the saffron state. Okay. And when it absorbs the saffron state, it appears pink or red in color. Right? And when it absorbs the crystal violet, it appears purple or violet in color. Okay. So, in this way, we can examine and observe or identify the nature of the bacteria. That is, whether it is gram positive or gram negative bacteria. Okay. And uh, as, we, as you should know that gram positive and gram negative bacteria both are useful as well as harmful okay in various uh, different conditions okay so this is what about the bacterial staining okay and by this bacterial staining we can understand the gram's nature okay so this is what about the uh, gram's nature of the prokaryotic cell let's discuss some few more points about the prokaryotic cell that is the characteristic feature of the prokaryotic cell okay and later we'll be talking about the eukaryotic cells Okay, so we have discussed about the cell wall and the cell wall composition. Okay, so you can pause the video and note down the points. Next, so this is the third part in the prokaryotic cell next to the cell wall is the cell membrane okay so cell membrane cell membrane is also referred as the plasma membrane okay cell membrane is also referred as the plasma membrane okay so cell membrane it is innermost layer of cell envelope is in the most it is in the most envelope or in the most layer of the most layer of cell envelope it is in the most layer of cell envelope the next it is thin it is thin or transparent or transparent and semi permeable membrane and semi permeable semi permeable membrane and semi permeable membrane Lipoproteins. Okay, it is made up of lipoproteins. Okay, so here we will discuss about it in the functions. 
Then it is made up of lipoproteins and it is triangular. Triangular means three layer. It is three layer. It is made up of triangular. Okay. Like like that of like that of you can use. Like that of you can use. Okay. It is also referred as respiratory membrane. It is also referred as respiratory membrane. Respiratory membrane as component of as component of electron transport system ETS I am writing in short electron transport system okay electron transport system and enzymes of respiration okay so cell membrane it is also acting as a uh, or it is also referred as a respiratory membrane okay and component of the electron transport chain or electron transport system and also act as a site for the enzyme which are required for the respiratory metabolite see respiration it is a process in which complex organic food material are broken down right for their breaking down there is a requirement of the enzyme which are present in the cell membrane okay now cell membrane look after the cell membrane it is not only present in the uh, what to say uh, in the or around the cell okay but it will also present in certain cell organelles but that can be seen in case of the eukaryote okay so that is how the function of the cell membrane is the next again it helps in it helps in transport of it helps in transport of gases it helps in transport of gases then or uh, transport of gases between cytoplasm between cytoplasm and extracellular medium and extra cellular medium extracellular medium okay so that that is what about it it helps in the transport of gases between cytoplasm and extracellular medium so this is what about the cell membrane so cell membrane it is the most okay and it is made up of lipoproteins it is trilaminar that is three uh, layer it is uh, referred as the respiratory membrane and component of electron transport chain and consists of enzymes then apart from that it helps in the transport of gases so basic function of the uh, what we say our cell membrane or the plasma membrane is the transportation of the gases or transportation of the nutrients okay now which can be done with the help of the processes like active and passive absorption okay so active absorption or the also active transport or passive transport active transport means what suppose uh, we we'll talk of the cell membrane okay i think it is uh, quite like in case of new period or higher organism the cell membrane it is made up of lipids okay so lipid bilayer it is called lipid bilayer this is a structure of lipid okay it consists of hydrophilic uh, head and hydrophobic tails are there these are the tails and similarly it is seen from the other side also okay so it is a lipid bilayer so what happens over in this lipid bilayer structure is that it helps in the absorption or transportation so whatever molecules that are being hydrophilic means the solvents are there solvent can be easily moved but the solute which are present in the solution 
if they are supposed to diffuse okay they will diffuse slowly okay that is a passive method of transportation if they are unable to diffuse there will be requirement of the energy in the form of atp this atp will open the channel and help in the transportation of molecules in the intracellular membrane or the extracellular matrix okay that is about it so there is about atp it is what as the active transport when it is simply absorbed that is by means of diffusion or there will be the facilitated diffusion now facilitated diffusion ka matlab kya hota hai facilitated diffusion there are certain carrier protein which are present around the cell membrane okay suppose this again will be completed so this is a cell membrane there is a presence of certain carrier proteins okay some proteins are there and these proteins what they do they help in the transportation like uh, these proteins can be divided into three types uh, or they can be referred as transporters like unipore simpore and antipore okay unipore means a single type of molecule can be transported in a single direction if two molecules are transported in the same direction that is called simpore and if two molecules are traveling in opposite direction they can they can be like that that is called as the antipore so that is also function of the cell membrane But this type of functions are most probably seen in case of the eukaryotic organisms. I hope you are getting this. It's not that difficult. If you have any kind of difficulty in understanding these concepts, you can text me on the WhatsApp. Okay. So you can pause the video and note down the points. Next is the the next part is the mesosome, or we can also consider the cytoplasm. Okay, so next to the plasma membrane is the cytoplasm. That is the D. Now cytoplasm is the place for presence of various cellular inclusions of cellular organelles. Okay, means this cell organelles they are present within the cytoplasm and they are supposed to perform various specific activities. Okay, it is associated with protein synthesis, uh, associated with the defense mechanism of the body. Okay, so many different activities are there which can be regulated by the cytoplasm. Now here, in prokaryotes, cytoplasm does not contain many of the cell organelles. So what we are calling it is a primitive type of cell, right? So here. The cytoplasm of the prokaryotic cell consists of the mesosomes, mesosomes, and and chromatophores. Okay, mesosomes and chromatophores. Then apart from that, it also consists of the Like uh, different cell organelles. Okay, here you know, we can write second. Again, we can write like uh, like uh, so many things are there. Okay, or uh, apart from cytoplasm, the mesosome and chromatophores can also be studied. Okay, so mesosome is nothing but the imagination of the cell membrane. Okay, if you look at the structure of the bacterial cells, what are they? Okay. Right. So here we have seen the correct. So this is what the cell membrane, the cell membrane. It is tiny void inside the cytoplasm. This part is called as the mesosome. Okay. Then there will be the plagiola, which are arising. Okay. Then so many structures are there on the. Cell wall or the capsule of the prokaryotic cell, but here it is the mesosome, which is acting as a mitochondria also. Okay, that provides the power for the 
respiratory metabolic activities okay then uh, this is also acting as a genetic material in case of the prokaryotic cell okay so that is about it the mesosome okay and chromatophores these are the internal membrane system which increases the surface area okay these are the internal membrane system which increases the surface area okay this is about the mesosome and the chromatophores okay they will also help with the increasing the metabolic rate right now let's look at the uh, cell site of plasmodium prokaryotic cell there is a presence of the other cell of organelles such as the uh, ribosomes ribosomes these are 70s type okay now as i told you previously also depending upon the sedimentation coefficient okay the ribosomes can be categorized as 70s and 80s so here the 70s type of ribosomes are found in case of the prokaryotic cell now ribosomes they play a great role in the uh, in the formation of the protein or help in the synthesis of the protein okay so ribosomes are present in the prokaryotic cell that is of 70s type now next to that is the uh, apart from ribosomes there is a presence of the plasmid now plasmid it is considered as the extra chromosomal set of dna okay it is considered as extra chromosomal set of dna which is uh, responsible for various different activities and depending upon the type of plasmid we can look after the different activities okay now plasmid it is also referred as self replicating or the autonomous body okay which can replicate by its own and now it is the plasmid is most commonly used in preparation of various types of vaccines in preparation of the recombinant dna technology or in case, oh, sorry for preparation of recombinant dna okay that is in case of in the field of genetic engineering okay so now it is it is more common or more usable okay now plasmid plasmids are three different types that is r plasmid then call plasmid then uh r plasmid is there call plasmid is there okay and f plasma okay r stand for resistance as it consists of resistance uh, the, what we say resistance genes okay antibiotic resistance genes are present so it is called r plasmid then call plasmid consists of colchicin that is colchicin plasmid and finally we have the f plasmid uh, which refers to the fertility factor now fertility factor in this is what see most of the bacteria with the plasmid they are supposed to be called as the fertile okay let's talk of the structure again once again suppose this is a rough sketch of the bacterial cell okay and within this bacterial cell we can see there is a presence of the plasmid which is double circular okay and uh, consists of various different enzymes as well as uh, antibiotic resistant genes now the plasmid which is present over here is capable of self replication okay we will label it as a plasmid it is supposed to have a self replication and by the self replication it can multiply from 1 to 5000 in the bacterial cell so that means it can replicate in many different uh, many different types okay so that plasmid which is been multiplied okay have the fertility factor and the bacteria will draw one more bacteria over here so in the bacteria when there is no plasmid is seen it can be referred as the infertile or the f minus type of bacteria f minus and it can be referred as the f plus now what happens over here on the surface of the capsule we can see there is a presence of a small hair like structure which are called as the pili these are called sex pili and this sex pili what they do they form a tube which is associated with the another bacteria and transport the fragment of the plasmid 
okay, into the another bacteria. So what happens over here is when it transfers, see the conjugation is not similar to this, it will go to over here. Okay. When we transfer a fragment of the plasmid, this fragment of plasmid has a cold if it is capable of self-replication, it will replicate by its own. And after replication, it will also form the N plus type of bacteria. Okay, so that is what the function of the plasmid is. Now here, the plasmid are of different types, okay, as far as discovery is concerned. So by the different scientists, like if we take an example, is the P. P R is P B R three twenty two. That is plasmid Bolivar Rodriguez. Okay, these are the name of scientists at plasmid. Now three twenty two is the order of discovery. That means the uh, what we say plasmid vector or the plasmid which was discovered is uh, was being uh, what we say finally discovered at three twenty second time. It was filled 321 times. So the name was given PBR 322. And the scientist who discovered it was the Bolivar Rodriguez. Then, apart from that, another plasmid is also there like PUC 18 or 19. So PUC 18 19 is P stands for plasmid, U for University of California, and 18 and 19 are the order of discovery. So these are the different types of plasmids which are used in the recombinant DNA technology. Students will discuss about recombinant DNA technology in uh, next classes. Okay, that as we know, this method is implicated for the production of different types of antibiotic, different types of biological products. Okay, organic products are there. Okay, which are available in the market. Even though production of the vaccines nowadays we know that many people they suffer from the uh, diabetes. For diabetes, what we do is we can uh, prepare the vaccine or we can produce the insulin with the help of method called recombinant DNA technology. And in that technology, this plasmid can be used for transferring the gene from one host to another host. Okay, so that is how the plasmid is also called as a vehicle. Means it is acting as a transport system from one place to another place. Okay, so that is what about the plasmid is. So student, this is what about the cytoplasm. Then apart from uh, uh, plasmid, some proteins are also present. Okay, enzymes are also present within the cytoplasm, which help in the various types of processes like respiration, renal of the food material. Okay, and various different activities are there. Fine. The next. Yes. Then apart from uh, so this is what about the bacterial cell. Okay. Now. If you look after the other structures which are associated with the bacterial cell, apart from the cytoplasm, outside the cytoplasm there is the presence of cilia and flagella. Okay. We will look after the structure of cilia and flagella in the next class. Okay. I hope you have understood this. If you have any kind of difficulty, you can text me. Okay. In the next class, we will discuss about few more characteristic features and we will move towards the uh, eukaryotic cell structure. Okay. And we will discuss about the characteristic feature of the eukaryotic cell. Thank you.